Just one glance can change my whole perspective. I'm ready to see you, see you rightly. Just as
throne All blessing and honor and glory and power Be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne All blessing and honor and glory and power Be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne All blessing and honor and glory and power Be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne All blessing and honor and glory and power Be unto the Lamb
Let every voice mean it. Exalt him. Just real soft, would you sing it again? Just the people. Let anything get between you and him right now. Nothing.
so holy right now. Ushers, quickly pass out communion elements to everybody. Jesus said, are you willing to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood? Don't let movement get in your way. Just stay, stay in this moment. He divided his ministry when he said, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Will you crucify yourself? Will you crucify the flesh? Will you drink the blood of the lamb, the blood of forgiveness? For without that, it is impossible to enter the kingdom of heaven. His sacrifice, his sacrifice is what he wants from us. Jesus, yes, we will. For you're so holy. You're so holy. Thank you. This was not planned, so thank you for doing this, ushers. If anybody does not have any elements, just lift your hand up. They'll find you. I think everybody's pretty good, though. We got it. Oh, Jesus. Let not the world get in our minds and our hearts. Let's remember what you did. I just, I just love it when you stood before Pontius Pilate and he said, I could stop this. And you said, no, you, you can't. If I wanted to stop it, I would wipe out mankind. Call more than 12 legions of angels. But not only do I not want to stop it, I completely surrender and submit unto this sacrifice. If you're a Satanist, they sacrifice animals, they sacrifice human life. There's only one true God. I speak it in the name of Jesus right now. The only one true God says nothing will be sacrificed but that which is worth being sacrificed, and that is Jesus himself. Every other religion is false. Satanism is completely 100% a joke. Only Jesus said, I will die for you. Everything else says, you must die for me. All he asks us to do is to die of the flesh. And he knew we couldn't do that ourselves, so he sent the Holy Spirit to help us. What more do we want? but to just say yes. This is your body completely broken. Every time we break this bread, we remember it was for us. We remember you did it for us. We didn't have to do it for you. We didn't have to die to please you. 
you died to love us. Oh, Jesus. There's none greater. Your body was broken. Satan was defeated. In Jesus' name, we do this as your ambassadors in remembrance of you. When you took the cup, you gave it to your apostles. And you said, this is my blood. It's kind of funny, Lord, because when you proclaim publicly, unless you're, as you're willing to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you divided your, your, tri your followers. But then that night, you explained to them exactly what it meant. If the others would have just st stuck around, they would have known. This is your blood shed so that all sins are forgiven. It's not negotiable. It's not arguable. You said, do it in remembrance of me. Don't forget that it is my shed blood that frees you. And so we do this in remembrance of you. Just moment, just take a moment and just really ponder that thought right there, which you just did. As often as you gather, he said, whether it's lunch, breakfast, snack, just remember that and know that you're my ambassadors. Oh, church, all he wants us to do is to be the available vessel that his light can shine through. He doesn't ask for anything else. Pick up our cross and follow him. For every person in here that agrees with that, give the Lord a strong amen. 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 To God be the glory. Now celebrate him and give him a shout of praise for what he did for us. Amen. Oh, man. Find your way to your seats. Bless his name. Terry, come up here. Thanks, worship team. Thank you. I wish you had a microphone. You could be heard then. Hmm. Thomas to the rescue. Hello, church. <laughs> God is good. Yeah, man. He's good all the time, every time. I love it. Okay, um, okay. So my wife was, she was in the back talking with me. Do you remember what you were telling me? Well, we were talking for a while, so I'm not sure yeah. what you're referring to. <laughs> Well, you told me something very passionate, and I just, I said to myself, I'm going to have her say it. I don't remember what it was, but I remembered when you said it, you were sitting at the table in the trailer telling me. What is it? Well, I mean, I was talking about the mm -hmm. gravity of what's going on in the world today. I was talking about the king. Okay, you might want to tell them that. There you go. That's how you do that. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to figure out which, which part you're referring to. The part to, of we just take, we, we have to recognize what's going on and we have to take it seriously and we have to. I was just, I was telling him that it's what's going on in the world today and the more that you see and the more that you hear that the body of Christ, I just felt like today in prayer time that we just really need to understand the gravity of what's going on and that the body of Christ 
the Lord is really going to, um, I want to say up our game, but he's really looking for us to be mature and to be alert and to see, to have eyes to see. And that we need to remember that we are not a body that has to say, I wonder who the next president's going to be or who the next pope is going to be or who's going to be the next king in England or all these things of world leaders. I, I just, it just came upon me yesterday that we know who the king is. We know who the ruler is. It's already been established, and we know who leads us. We know who has us. We know who, who, will, who will reign for eternity. So even though leaders and things shift and change, the body of Christ has to remember that we know who our king is, and not just our king, the king, and that there's just a... Um, just such a gravity and seeing with our spiritual eyes. I, I can't stress that enough um, to, to see, to truly see what is going on. And we, and we need to be shaken awake and we can't, this is not to, time to sleep or slumber or to just get caught up in the things of the world. And yes, we have to live everyday life, but I think sometimes we can get too caught up in everyday life and forget the spiritual aspect of why we're really here and what we really need to be doing. And prayer is so powerful. It's so underrated. And it's left dormant and sleeping sometimes. But prayer is so powerful. And one word from the Lord, one whisper in your ear can change the entire course of your life. He sets mandates with one word. And so I just, we just need to understand that gravity and that power of who we serve and that how powerful the Holy Spirit is in us. So about prayer, hmm? maybe 6.30 you can get some more people to join you. Yes, I mean every, every seven nights um, we usually announce prayer and we didn't announce it this time. I guess, I don't know, I just thought that we would automatically do what we do, but I know everybody has schedules and so I'm going to officially announce that um, those who can come early and pray um, we were meeting at 6.30. Yeah, we were meeting at 6, but we're, we're going to say more like 6.30. So if um, you can come. And we just, uh, they have rehearsal, but we walk around the sanctuary and we pray. And we just ask that it not be a time of um, hanging out and talking and catching up. We can do that uh, beforehand or after. But we, while worship is going on, we literally just <clears throat> walk around and pray and pray over each, each seat and just pray for... Um, just God's, the Holy Spirit's agenda, what he has planned and what he wills. And we just want to surrender to that and offer everything up to him. Amen? Amen. So I want to just say one thing, because you were saying something, we know who our king is. Mm -hmm. And if there, was a, if there was a lineup and there were four women and four men, and one of those woman, women were your mom and one of those men were your dad, you would know who they were, right? So if they said, if you were a child and they said, go to your mom, would you go to someone else or would you go right to your mom? Of course you'd go to your mom or your dad. So if we know who our king is, then why would we look anywhere else besides him? He says, come unto me. Come unto me, and then I'll draw to me, and I'll draw near to you. So as we begin this message tonight, I just want you to understand that we are going to draw near to the king tonight. There's only one. Amen? Amen? Amen. I also wanted to say um, that... Now you're just getting carried away. <laughs> no, one of the things that I forgot to say, I don't even think I shared this with you, was the gravity of the churches, and that as things heighten, and they will, uh, the Bible tells us that they will, uh, we don't have to fear that, but like I said, we need to be ready. But as things heighten, I, I truly believe that people, because whenever there's a disaster or there's a, whatever tragic things happen in different countries, where do they go? They go running to the churches. And I just had this visual of people running in droves to the churches, and there will be churches who empty out to run to real churches. So the Lord, I believe, is, 
is going to purify the church in this process, that the true church will be standing and that those churches that have changed his word and changed his laws and that are playing church, and, and I, I don't say this lightly, but that are playing church, that the people in those, I don't even know if you call them congregations, they're gonna need to cling to what's real and if it's not real in that house, they're gonna go running desperately to a house that has the true word of God. And that's why Pastor Joe is constantly saying the word, the word, the word. So I pray for the churches, pray for, don't judge them, pray for them to be mighty in the word and to be a beacon of light because when, when things come, and, and like I said, they do at times, um, people will be running to those houses that have that light. Amen? Amen. Amen. You put that down. Turn it off. <clears throat> Amen to that. And what, just in case anybody was not hearing clearly what Terry said, she wasn't saying we're the only real church. She's just saying there's many churches. There's many, many churches that will preach the word of God. But you just have to... Uh, you just have to know that. And if you don't read the word, then you're really not gonna know who's actually preaching truth and who's not, you know? So you gotta take it and take it six strong. So, so tonight, tonight, um, something's stirring in my spirit, but God is only showing me a little bit and, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just let it unfold as he shows me more. Uh, but I want you to prepare your hearts for tonight, really, because there's, there's a, I don't know, I'm just gonna go ahead and preach. I'm not even gonna try and figure out what I think I'm trying to say here. But if, tonight, of course, this is night number four for the greater glory. And I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna put a title of a thought in your head tonight, RSVP. That's it. And so we're gonna hold on to that RSVP for a second, and we're going to just start the message. Because I, I, just, I just know that as, as we continue to grow, we started talking about, if you were here Sunday morning, how, how David was, was deceived by sin. Sunday night, how the woman with the, uh, with the crumbs, she just heard the, the possessed daughter, how she pushes past everything. These messages are progressive. These messages are just taking us from one level of faith to another level of faith. And it does, you say, what's taking us to the next level? Just you being here listening to it. Just you hearing and listening to this is gonna eventually, you know, there's people that have come to me and it says, you know, I've been coming to this church now for three years and I just started reading my Bible because I hear you say it so much, it actually is clicking now. Well, it took two, three years. So eventually over the seven nights, something's gonna click and the faith would just be, you know, just come right through you. Amen to that? Okay, so I'm gonna start with Matthew 7. This is, this is gonna be, uh, this is a neat little journey tonight. And I started talking about this a little bit yesterday, and I said I was going to fix it, you know, I was going to continue it. Uh, ten, I thought it was going to be tomorrow night, but it's actually tonight. So Matthew 7, 8, uh, 13 says this. You ready for this? Say yes, yes, if you're ready. Okay, cool. It says this. Enter through the narrow gate. Remember I was talking about that last night? Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Now, wait a second here. Hold on a second. Wide is the gate... Broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many, I, I just underline that if you've got your Bible open, many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. This is Jesus talking here. So it's kind of like there's people that are going, um, we have a, a, a generation that might be unfolding a little bit too much right now that is looking for something called your truth. I don't wanna have to do anything. I just know that if I consider myself a good person, that's enough to get me into heaven. Well, Jesus is telling you right here that wide is the gate for that kind of thinking. Narrow is the gate that gets you to eternal life. And you say, well, what does it actually really mean? Well, the narrow gate and the road that Jesus is talking about here refers to Jesus' teachings, and which emphasize not external requirements, but internal transformation. That means he, you take his teachings internally, and the power of the Holy Spirit is what transforms you. But if you don't take his word in you, 
then, then basically you're going on a wide road thinking, I don't really need the church. I don't need the word. I don't need the truth because I have my own truth. Amen? So this is something that's kind of scary if you think about it, but even the Lord Jesus acknowledged that few would find the true way, the way that leads to life. You say, what does that mean, only few? Well, there's already 8 billion people on the planet. There were billions more that lived before us. So there's a lot of people that won't find that way. Jesus, but he died. Yes, but he is a, he is a God that loves you so much that he gives you the choice. He gives you a choice. He did everything he could do for you. It's like you get, the, you get a person who's just, they're, they're down and out in their life and they don't have it, they can't support their family and you literally take them and you, 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 get, you, co- you, you help them sign a loan to their house, you help them get a car, you get them a job, they don't go to work, they don't pay for the house, they don't pay for, you did everything you could do for them. They still chose to live the way they wanted to. The consequence I don't know if people understand consequence, but the consequence was not pleasing. The consequence here will not be pleasing. Even today, we see that many of the people, they don't want to hear the scriptures. People, even people in church, they don't want, I told you the other day, people said to me, I'd come to your church, but you preach too many scriptures. Okay, I don't know what else to tell you, but narrow is the way I preach. This is the truth, you know? I, I, really, I don't really think that my wisdom and my humor and my ability to speak publicly is going to get you in heaven. But the scriptures will. So, and you, how do you explain that to people? They don't, I don't know. So it's easier to listen to music than to sit in there and listen to me explain scriptures. Some people just like, well, I don't, want, I don't like music. I like the scriptures. But a lot of people, a younger generation is like, I just want to sit with my eyes closed and I want to just worship God. There's nothing wrong with worshiping God. That's beautiful. But you have to understand something. It's, it's the music, the music is not, it, 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 there's no transformation without the scriptures. So you can listen to the music all you want. You can worship, you can sit and soak in the music all you want. All it's making you do is think about God. But there's no scripture. So if there's no scripture, then there's no, there's no light in which you're supposed to walk on that path. It's really dangerous. It's really, really dangerous. And there's a whole world out there that is suffering from that very thing. And you could see it in the communities if you just watch. Okay, but just hold on now. Hold on. So... Did we ever give that thought? Did you ever give that thought? That wide is the destruction and very few will make it to where they're supposed to go. So before you and me, well, let me say this. Salvation, I told, I've been talking about this all week. I just kind of like to reiterate it. Salvation is a gift and so is faith. Salvation is a person and so is faith. Jesus, rely on Christ is faith. Salvation is Jesus. Are you with me? So if Jesus is salvation and faith is salvation, they are both Jesus, but do people really want it? Hold on now. Hear me clearly. Do people really want salvation? Do they really want faith? The answer to that is yes. Do they really choose it? Jesus said, not many. Really hear what I just said there. Keep everyone wants salvation. If they really knew what it was, they would want it. And even many Christians say, of course I want salvation. But do they choose it? Think about that. Well, I choose it. I say I choose it. That's not what it's about. So before we worry about all the people on the wide road, which we can do from time to time, before we judge the wrong in the world, maybe, maybe we should really ask ourselves where we are on the journey. Where are we on this road journey that we're on? And you just can't be on the narrow road because you say you are. Are you hearing me? Come on. You can't just go, I'm on the narrow road. Really? God will decide and tell you if you're on the narrow road. 
You can't decide that. So we got to read his teachings and internally grab hold of them and follow him. That's how, that's how you end up on the narrow road. But you have to really think about that. Because so many times we say, no, I'm a Christian. That's why I was telling you before when we, we put our, when my sister would advertise for the school, you could just say a Christian school, but you can't, people are coming, they're telling you what kind of a Christian they are. There's, Jesus isn't even any in the picture. I don't understand how there could be so many different, you know, categories of what a Christian is. Christ, that's it. <laughs> You're a follower or you're not. Either everything in this book is what you follow or you don't follow any of it. Amen? It's either all sin or all not. You can't say I'm a Christian and then live to the flesh. Because that's the wide road. There's a narrow road. And the narrow road is not easy. And there's people that sit in pews that literally think they're on the narrow road, but they're not. I'm not telling you that. I am not judging you. I'm just telling you what this says. I've been scared of this since I was a little kid. I've been, I've, God has brought fear to me since I was a little kid, a little child. So much so, I had a, I had a, watch myself to not become OCD for God just because I didn't want him to be mad at me. There was nobody to tell me he wasn't mad at me. I just thought if I did something wrong, he was mad at me. If I said something wrong, he was mad at me. My grandfather got saved because he never heard me say a curse word. In an Italian family, if you don't curse, you can't talk. <laughs> and I don't mean just curse words like little small curse words. I mean the kind that can pierce you. But when the Bible says don't use foul or abusive language, I think he means that. That doesn't mean, and I've had people call me, well, you're just a religious Christian. No, I'm just trying to follow the word. Amen? Amen. It's like, I, I'm not trying to be like holier than thou, but he says, don't use foul or abusive language, so I'm not going to do it because I'm afraid of him. I fear God. I fear him in reverence and respect, but I also fear that he created me. And it's like he went, Whoa. I'm alive, he can go, you're not alive. Which is not bad if you're not alive. But if he goes like this, if he goes, that means you're out. That's the wide road. I don't want to be on the wide road. Now there's people out here going, well, you mean to tell me if I start cursing, I'm going to be on the wide road? I didn't say that. I'm just saying, how serious are you about this Jesus that we're talking about? Because how do we expect greater glory to enter our life? How can we be a reflection of Christ to the world, to a dying world, if we're not even serious enough? Think about that. So Matthew 7, verse 21, it says this. Oh, this is one of the other verses. I'm just giving you all my scary verses right now. <clears throat> Watch this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. This is, not, this is not Old Testament. This is Jesus talking. Amen? So you can't like have, you can't, you can't put grace and mercy over that right there. Grace and mercy only take place when you're willing to try. When you're willing to step all in. Amen? Amen? You can't say, I can sin and do whatever I want. Grace will take care of me. I can do anything I want. Mercy will take care of me. Come on, are you with me? Do you understand? The road is, ri the, the, the road is wide. <laughs> the road is wide for that kind of thinking. It's kind of scary. It really is. So watch now. Hear this now because people think I can come to an altar, say a handful of words that the preacher told me to say, and I'm going to heaven. No, it's not true. Literally, based on the will of the Father in heaven, he says, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven because the affirmation that Jesus is Lord, the, the affirmation of Jesus is Lord is meaningless if it is not backed by obedience to God's will. Whoa, hold on to that. 
That's scary right there. Well, I, I gave my life to Jesus. You did, what did you do? I went to an altar and I said this, but nothing has changed. So you said, you said what you said as a guilt offering, but there was no follow. So literally, if it's not backed with obedience, read Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 27, Deuteronomy 28. If you're faithful, if you're obedient, I'll do this. If you're not, I'll do this. Oh, that's Old Testament, but it's still God. Amen? With Jesus, you can repent for that, but you can't still do it. I don't know if anybody's getting this. You, you, can, you can repent and mess up, but you can't repent and then say, okay, good, now I can do it again. What are you getting at? That's a wide road. Everybody's doing that. If we don't get serious and preach it hard to the church, and there might be somebody out here going, well, I don't believe what you're saying, Pastor. Matter of fact, I don't even like what you're saying. Well, that's okay. I'm just reading the scriptures. I, I didn't make it up. I'm reading the red letter stuff. Are you with me? So when Jesus says, um, those who say to me, Lord, Lord, not, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those, the ones who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now, hold on here. You can't. You can say Jesus is Lord, but not walk it. What is God's will? Think about this. Are you ready for this? What is God's will? We're not gonna, let's start with the very beginning of God's will. Ready for this? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He, that's a statement. That is a statement. What is God's will? Here, I'll help you out. Jesus. So what he's saying is, my kingdom, Jesus will come, and everything Jesus is will be done on earth as it was in heaven before he came. Amen. So whatever Jesus says is the will of the Father. If you don't like what Jesus says, then you're not doing the will of the Father. And if you're not doing the will of the Father, then these words, well, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven because you're not doing the will of the Father. So what is the first will of the Father? The, the will of the Father is everything Jesus says to do. So when you open this and you start reading this, this is the will of the Father. But you can't just read it. You actually have to do it. Amen. Come on. So now we'll get, now let me break it down. Here's a will. To love the Lord your God with all your mind, soul, and strength, love your neighbors yourself. Jesus said to do that. Now, can you love your neighbors yourself? Can you love? Here, hold on, let me help you out here. In case I haven't said this enough, because I'm already boring myself saying it, but I'm going to say it again. So you're married, okay? Your spouse cheats on you. And the person that they cheated on you with comes over to your house and wants to have dinner with you. And you know who they are. Can you love that person? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thief broke in your house and stole your grandmother's beautiful heirloom. Can you love that person? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have to like that person? No. No, 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 no. Can you slap them? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But love is covenant, commitment, and communion. So basically what you're saying is I can't stand you. You are a rotten piece of trash, but I'm not going to let you go to hell. I'm not going to let you go to hell. I'm going to still tell you Jesus is the only way, and you need to find him right now. Are you with me? So love the Lord your God with all your mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, if you understand the difference between neighbor and brother, brother is a Christian. Neighbor is somebody who's not. Neighbor are the people you don't like. Neighbor are the people when you're, when you're going through your TikToks and your scrolls and your reels, those are the people, I can't believe they're doing that. Oh my God. That's your neighbor. That's who God wants you to love. You can take it up with him in time. Okay, two, Proclaim the gospel to all the earth in your actions and in your ways. Your entire life must proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth and really, if necessary, use a few words. 
but he doesn't expect you to say a word. Nothing at all. I didn't understand that. What do you mean? Well, everything you do should line up with his word. How you speak, what you say, how you love, how you talk to people, how, how, what you do when people aren't looking, when you don't think anyone's looking at you. What do you do at home when you're by yourself? What are you watching on TV when you're by yourself? What is on your phone when you're by yourself? These are the things that the will of the Father expects us to do. Amen? You can't do this without the help of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit cannot help you unless you're in the Word trying to figure out what the will is. Come on. The will. Are you hearing it? What is a will? A will. When somebody dies and leaves you something, you go and the will tells you what you get. Amen? His will says, all of heaven is yours, but you must do what I tell you to do. You must love me. Now, I'm not going to make you. I'm just going to tell you, this is what it takes to go here. This is what it takes to be in the sauna for your rest of your life. This is what it takes to be in eternal glory, and this is what you do if you want eternal damnation. It's up to you. It's up to you. If Jesus leaves it up to you, I'm going to leave it up to you because I got my own making sure I don't switch lanes at any given time. Come on, you with me? So it's going to get better here. Hold on. So here's another one. Walk in the light of the Lord not the darkness of this world. Read it. Receive it. Follow it. Say it again. Read it. Receive it. And follow it. That's his will. That's the will of the Father. Resist the enemy and he will flee. The only way to resist him is to be in Christ. Do you, can you start to see that I'm really not crazy? I'm not insane when I tell you to read this every day. This, this is it right here. This is the answer right here. He didn't say understand it. He just said read it. That's the Holy Spirit's job. So you say, Joe, I, I'm so tired of you telling me to read my Bible. But everything I can ever preach, it takes you right back to that. So I really don't know what else to preach. I can stay up here and I can go spend time at home and I can write a comedy and then we could laugh all night. And you'll walk out of going, that was amazing because laughter does a body good like medicine, but you didn't get anything out of it. You just laughed. It helped your body, but it didn't help your spirit. It didn't help your soul. You with me? Okay, so somehow we get so uncomfortable, or sorry, we get so actually, we get so comfortable with being a Christian that we actually stop doing the will of the Father and focus on the will of us. And we get so wrapped up in our own ways that we stop doing what Jesus said to do. We must actually make a conscious decision to obey and follow. We have to make a conscious decision and we, we can't just get there by doing nothing. Oh, are you with me? Oh, no, no, no. See, pastor, I was listening to you until you got there, but Jesus said all you gotta do is believe in your heart Proclaim it with your lips and you are saved. Well, of course. But if you actually believe it with your heart, that means you're actually doing what you said you believe in. So it causes you to do something. You don't get to heaven by your works, but you get to heaven by what you say. If your heart says Jesus is Lord, then everything you do shows that. But if, you're, if, if, you, if your lips say Jesus is Lord and every bit of your actions is not, then Jesus is like, you're the hypocrite that Isaiah talked about. Your lips are close, but your heart is far from me. You're just merely human rules is all you follow. See, it's not so easy. Jesus is not so friendly when you get down to the brass tacks of it all. He loves you. He died for you. But my goodness, he knows the world is coming against you. He knows you can't handle it. He knows you're not strong enough. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit and left you his word. My peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. What is the peace he left us? This. This is the peace. Amen? Okay. So now... It's actually like being this whole thing about actually choosing because you can't just skate in. But it's like being invited to a wedding. Let's just say you're invited to a wedding, okay? The bride and the groom want you to be at the wedding. They want you to be at the wedding. So what do they do? 
they send you an invitation. You get the invitation and you're like, oh, I want to go to this wedding. Yeah, I'm going to go. So you RSVP. You RSVP. Respond, see, vous play. That's what it means. So you RSVP telling them you're going to be there. You actually go out and buy them a gift to bring to the wedding. However, for whatever reason, you choose not to go. But you RSVP'd and you bought a gift, but you didn't go to the ceremony, you didn't go to the reception, and you never gave them the gift. So really, what did you do? I'm a Christian. I love God, but I don't do anything to show. I don't RSVP. So Jesus invites you to receive his gifts, the gift of salvation, the gift of faith. And we say we want it, but we never take the responsibility or actions to actually go, to do. So, well, we don't, we don't just accidentally get there. We don't just accidentally get to heaven. Yes, we do. No, we don't. The, war, the road is wide. The road to get to heaven is narrow. It's for, G, it's for the people, and literally, as he said in the text, is the ones that take his teachings to heart and follow them. That's the narrow road. Are you with me? It's not, it's not a fun service, huh? Let's just go home. <laughs> so if I choose to go to the wedding, if I choose to receive what Jesus gives me, then I'm headed to be part of what I was invited to do. But if I choose to not go, then I choose to miss out. If I choose Jesus to follow him, I choose the narrow road. If I choose to not do it, but I speak that I'm going to do it, and I talk a good Christian walk, but I don't do anything about it, then I'm on the wide road. Amen? Everybody with me over there? Okay, so what is the road that leads to destruction? And wide is the road and narrow is the one that leads to, to glory. So which one do you want? The world is now teaching us. Watch this, guys. The world is now teaching us to do what we please and not be concerned with the consequences. Okay, it gets even worse than that because as a matter of fact, the world is slowly numbing society that there will not even be a consequence for your actions. It's all over the news. It's all over social media. It's everywhere. There's no, con it's in supermarkets, in sores. Anything you want to do, just do it. Don't worry about it. The object of Satan is to eliminate God right here. Because if he can eliminate it here in you, then you won't teach it to your kids. But now, in this generation, we've gone a step further, and now we're attacking the kids. And we're eliminating God out of the children. Are you with me? So faith is a gift, and the greater glory of God is a gift. And we got to choose whether we receive this gift, and we choose by doing the will of the Father. That's exactly what he says. Not the will that pleases us, but his will. We will not just get there without choosing and taking action. We have to do it. So before you and I, I put a slide up. I got like one slide tonight. But before you and I launch out to help others, we are as equipped as we should be. No, excuse me. Let me read it like it says. Before we launch out to help others, are we as equipped as we should be? Or is the invitation just on the refrigerator? And maybe we'll get around to it. So everybody in this room, ask yourself this question. Am I equipped? Am I a follower? Or is my RSVP still on the refrigerator? And I walk by it and I go, I got to get to that. I got to read my Bible some more. Yeah, I got to stop doing that. I can't. I got to quit that. Really, I really got to do it. Not, I need to stop this. Holy Spirit, help me. Take me and lead me in this word, please. Please give me this. Please, I beg you, God. Help me. In Jesus' name, help me. Help me. That's, there's a difference right there. That's when you walk around holding the, the, the challenge in your heart, saying, Jesus, he's got, I got you. We'll do this slow, you and me. We're gonna, we got this. But when it's on the refrigerator and you pass by and you just go, yeah, yeah, I'll get around to that. That's what we're talking about here. That's the wide road mentality. So here, I want to I want to take a scripture and I want to share this with you. You ready for this? Because this now everything I said, I just all I said this for was just examine yourself. Examine yourself. But now, some of you have examined yourself and you say, Pastor, that's what I do. I live that life. 
I, I can, I'm, I'm not going to pick anybody out, you know, but I'm just staring, I'm staring at Tony and Vanessa. I, I watch them live this. I watch them live this. They, they, they live by the scriptures. They, they teach their children by the scriptures. So that's that their followers. But what about somebody like Tony? What about Vanessa? What about my wife? What about you guys? What about all you guys? You know, what about Jeff? Carrie? My sister, what about all the people that say, but I do this, so was it even necessary we talk about this? It was, because we have to get it out there first. But this now, if you're that, then now I'm going to ask you to change your mindset and go move to this, this scripture right here, John 14. Here is an even narrower road. You ready? Okay. Jesus says, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me, will do the works I have been doing. Please hear every word of this, and this is going to eliminate the Christian from the crazy Christian. Amen? The charismatic from the charismaniac. You with me? Okay. So, when he says, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Not if you really believe me, this is what you'll do. No, no, no. If you believe in him, he's going to allow you to do what he does. So now what he's doing is he's creating an army. This is what Jesus wanted to do. Jesus empowers believers to do God's work on earth, which includes performing miracles. Not just one person, all, all who believe in me will do this. All who believe in me, who believe in me, Come on, I don't know if you're hearing these words. If you believe in him, you follow him. If you say you believe in him, you do whatever you want and fool, fool everybody else. So this is, this is why the, the, the narrow road has just gotten more narrow. Because now God says, now I'm going to call the narrow road people to do even greater things. That's an even narrower road. Because now you got to really live it. Okay? So now watch this. He says this, um, you'll be doing the works I've been doing and... They will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. What does that mean when Jesus says, you're going to do even greater than what I did? Well, how can we do greater than Jesus? Well, first of all, we can't. But he said it. So let me explain what it means. It's Jesus' intention, literally right here in, these, in this text, to extend the work of the Spirit beyond himself to all believers as he had already begun to do. He's like saying, everything that I have done, if you truly are following me, I'm going to turn around and say, you do it now because I have gone to the Father. What, does it not say that? Keep it up there. Where does it say that? He says, because I'm going to the Father. See, it doesn't make any sense. He says, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do these works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. What does that mean, because I'm going to the Father? It's very simple. When he goes to the Father, he sends you the Holy Spirit. That's the power of the miracles. Amen. Come on. The only way the Holy Spirit comes is if he leaves. The only way you get tapped into the Holy Spirit is if you receive Jesus. The only reason, the only way the Holy Spirit will actually move on your life is if you choose to follow him. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to choose to follow him. Amen? Amen. Then the Holy Spirit comes in, and the more you move, the more you're in the Spirit, the more you work, the more the Holy Spirit, the more the Holy Spirit flows through you, and the greater things of these that you will do. Why? Because now it's everyone who chooses to believe doing it. It's no longer just Jesus. Okay, are you getting that? When Jesus walked the earth, it was just him. Miracles didn't happen unless he was there. But if you multiply that times the church, the real church, the real church, the hungry people, then that, now he can multiply the proclamation of the gospel. He can multiply healing. He can multiply the, the demon possessed, the, 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 um, the, the casting out of, 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 of demons. What are you talking about? Look at the world. Don't, this stuff that's happening right now is demonic. What are the Christians doing? They're just complaining. Get a hold of the Holy Spirit. Get a hold of the Word of God. Get a hold of Jesus and let Him put you to work and these demons will flee. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you in? I said, are you in? You're going to get a chance to prove that in a minute. 
So when Jesus was saying about how you'll do greater, he was actually referring to the text of Luke 9, starting with verse 1. This is what he says. Ready? When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out how many demons? Okay. And to cure disease. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. This is what he did. He, remember when he sent them out? They came back. They were all excited. Okay. So now Jesus was stayed back. But what he did was now multiplied by, by people, by, by multiple people. Not just one person in one direction, but many people in many directions. You with me? Okay, so now he says this. He told them, take nothing on your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you have, uh, uh, leave that town. If people don't welcome you, leave the town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. D don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. All right? So they set out. They went from village to village proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Watch very closely. God controls healings. Well, I prayed for people and they didn't get healed. Well, I pray, I've never prayed for anybody a, a demonic oppression or a demonic possession. I've never once in, a, in the almost 30 years of ministry have ever prayed for somebody who was demon possessed and that demon didn't come out every single time. Now, everybody that I prayed for that was sick, some got healed, some didn't. Okay, watch the text. Ready? He gathered the 12. He gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure disease. All right? He healed all. Amen? We pray he heals. We pray he chooses to heal. We pray he chooses not to heal. Why would he choose not to heal? I don't know. I don't know. No sickness is from God. Are you with me? But I don't know what that's going to do to somebody. If a demon possess, person is possessed and that demon comes out of them, they are now free to choose. But if a person that is sick gets healed, do you know how many people I have seen get completely healed and turn completely away from God? Because they got what they wanted. Are you with me? So what you're trying to tell me, Pastor, is Jesus keeps you sick to keep you holy. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. All I said was, he said, all you pray for, every demon will come out. When he says, you pray for the sick, I'll choose who gets healed. But I need you to pray for them. Amen? Now, if anybody tells you differently, if anybody said, well, no, no, no. Well, then why aren't you? Why, aren't, why isn't everyone you're praying for getting healed? See, people will talk a good talk. But then they'll get out on the streets and they'll start praying for the sick and it's like, they're healed. That, that's why you see people, okay, I'm, I, I'm going somewhere I really shouldn't. But let's just go there anyway, okay? They'll fabricate a healing to show you that it's healed. The person is healed because the adrenaline is going through them and there's no pain and an hour later they're doing this, okay? I seen that. I saw a person in front of thousands of people throw their walker away and run on the stage and walk back to their seat with their walker. Were they healed? No. How do you know? That was my job. I had to call those people's doctor and find out if they were healed. Then I had to call the people and find out if they were healed. Are you healed? I'm believing I am. But are you healed? I'm believing I am. I'm believing with you, but are you healed? Well, not yet. Okay. That's called a healing. A miracle happens instantaneously. Are you with me? When you pray for the sick, we, it's happened, Terry and I, you pray for the sick, bam, right there they're healed. Like what in the world? And you're just as shocked as they are. But a healing takes time. Are you with me? So don't let people get crazy about this thing. This is like, and, then, and make up, listen, you're healed or you're not. I mean, you're, it's a miracle or it's a healing, whatever it is. You're going to definitely get healed, trust me. Because sometimes healing is with Jesus. Amen? But we're not, we're not weakening healing. Because he says right here, the 12, he gathered them and he gave them power and authority. He gave them power and authority. But when they returned, the power came back to him again. It was borrowed. When the, when the upper room situation took place, the power was given to them. 
It wasn't just given to the 12. It was given to all of them, all 120. And Peter, if you continue to read in verse 2 of, of the book of Acts, Peter says, it is for all who receive and are baptized. All. Not just that time frame, not just that era, as some people might say, healing was just for the book of Acts. No, no, no. Healing is for the remainder of the time on this planet because Jesus is for the remainder of the time on this planet. Are you with me? So don't denote Jesus. But the question you have to ask yourself is, where are you in all this? So let me go back to the, let me go back to the original text, which is John 14. Ready? In verse 13, it says, and I will do what Jesus, watch what he says now. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Now, that is taken out of context as long as I've been a Christian. Well, I ask him for this, and I ask him for a car, and I ask him for a wife, and I ask him for a husband. I got nothing. Okay, then you didn't read the first part of the script, which says, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And I will give you whatever you ask for to do what I have been doing, not what you have been doing. I am not going to grace you with my power so you can do what you want. I'm only going to bless you with my power to do what you have seen me do. Because what I have done glorifies the Father and what you do glorifies me. Come on! Do you get that? Hallelujah! Whew. Anyway, worship team, come up here, please. Oh, I should have put that in a slide is what I should have done. Stand up with me. Come on, I want you to loosen yourself up here. Just stay, just stay in this moment right now. Just stay right here in this moment with me. While you're standing... People always ask me, they say, Joe, why is it you will preach the message and then say what you just said, pace back and forth and then come back and then reiterate it again? You want to know why? Why do you think? How many of you didn't hear what I just said? Nobody, I'm not raising my hand. <laughs> Probably a small percentage of you didn't hear a word I said. A larger percent of it maybe understood it, maybe didn't understand it. And then the rest of them are going, I got it. So I'm going to say it again so you can hear it. Let the Holy Spirit. People say, just let them hear it the first time. They don't hear it, it's their problem. No, that's just not my heart. I, got, I want everybody to hear it the first time. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, Jesus says. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? Only, what's he going to let you do? Only what you have seen him do. Amen? So you're, he's not going to give you the power to lay hands on a chicken and give birth to a dog. Okay? He's also not going to let you lay hands on people to build your ministry. Okay, I don't think you heard that, but uh, you did. Okay, you did. He's not going to let you build your ministry with his power. That's why he says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Not you. Not your ministry. Not your evangelistic ministry. Not your church. Not your worship team, not your band, not your gigs, just the Father. How many people know how serious Jesus is? Because everything I just said is for you. But the road is wide for those that just play. The road is very narrow for those that are serious. And it gets even more narrow because some of them are serious about Jesus but they're not serious about being used by him. Amen? I just want to proclaim the gospel, but I don't know if I believe in the power of God. Maybe you'll believe in the power of God now more when you understand the power is controlled by God, not you. I said that once. I literally said that. In Indonesia... In 2005, I was on a field 
where there was about 400,000 people. And I'm walking through the crowd praying for the sick. And there was a lady there who had never heard a day in her life. She was born completely deaf. And the lady that I was with was about 80. She didn't care about nothing. She had this. She understood then what I am just understanding in the last, you know, 15 years. She knew it then. She already knew it. And so I remember turning to this guy. This is when I actually learned it. But I knew it. I heard it. I didn't really learn it. I turned to this guy and I'm like, I, ooh, I, don't, I don't know if I have faith to pray for that person. Wow. And the man said to me, he goes, it's, it's not you that's doing it. It's him that's doing it. He's not, he's just asking you to do it. You need to have enough faith to know that Jesus is the one that can heal. You don't have to have faith that you're going to heal them. You just have to have faith that he will heal them as he chooses. And if he chooses, whether it be a miracle or healing. And I sat there and I'm like, hmm, that makes a little sense. I get it. But then as time went by, it clicked deeper and deeper until I got it. And I will never, ever in my life forget this, this girl, this Indonesian girl who sat there. I remember she was real skinny and she looked around, her eyes moved a lot because she couldn't hear a thing. And all she would do would, would be utter sounds. And I remember this lady walking up to her and she placed her hands like this over her ears. And she just was so, just so pure and she said, looked right into the eyes of the lady and she said, in Jesus' name, receive your hearing. And she took her hands like this and I, I promise you, this is exactly what she did. She goes, and she goes, and I'm like, it didn't work didn't work oh no now what do we do and this girl from from not even her throat but her innermost being began to scream like 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 horror scream and I'm like dear God what happened and she's screaming and screaming and this little old lady she's just like and I'm like do something else. She's screaming. I mean, it's 400,000 people, and you can hear her over everybody. Not really, but because it was very noisy. Well, she's like, ask her what's happening. That's what the lady said to the translating person. Ask her what's happening. And she's, happened. she's looking at her mother or whoever the lady was there, and she's like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What is she saying? And she kept, she, her mother knew what she was saying. She had never heard in her life, but when her ears popped open, the, 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 the music was so loud and the atmosphere of 400,000 people was so loud, she was so freaked out, she didn't know what it was. So she's scared, because she didn't know. The blessing was so powerful, it actually scared her, because she was used to living in her bondage. She couldn't understand freedom. Come on. She was blessed. I was embarrassed because I didn't understand what to do. I was young. I might have even been 20 or 30 years ago. I don't even know. Maybe in the first part of my ministry. I don't even know if it was 2005. It might have been the late 90s. So anyway, so, so she calmed her down and she said, she said like this. She goes, Jesus. And the, the girl goes, Jesus. And then she holds her hand like this, Jesus. And she says it again, because she says, I don't want you to read my lips, I want you to hear. And the girl heard. And that was one of many miracles. And it's like, at this point, I will pray for anybody, for anything. It doesn't make a difference, because it's not about me. Amen? It's about him, through you. But... I want to know right now, when Jesus said to me in July 22nd, 2023, 
the glory will be great on this church, greater than ever before. That means because there's going to be greater faith in the people. Because I'm not stopping this, this message after this, this uh, seven nights. We're gonna, I'm going to bring it up in every service I, I preach. I'm, we're going to build the faith in this house, man. Because the faith brings the greater glory. And he said, to the point to where there are so many people that are, that are receiving this, that there's multiple, it's happening. It doesn't make a difference if there's seven, eight billion people on the planet and there's only a few people in here that are actually, it's okay, because it'll spread. All Jesus needs is one person. Like Terry said, one, one aha moment can change your life. One word, when you come up and you say, Jesus, please, I believe, use me. You got it. That's it. Your life's changed. Just like that. So I think tonight, this is the fourth night, it's going to intensify. I think it's time for you and me to not only RSVP, (laughs) but actually show up tonight. Come to this altar and literally be filled with what? Whatever you lack. If you, don't have, if you don't have the will of the Father, receive, receive it. Holy Spirit, I don't want to live another moment without you. I, don't want, I do not want to do my will any longer. If you come to this altar and you say, I haven't read my Bible ever in my life, give me strength to read the Word of God. You know what? I don't like reading the Word of God. Well, then find somebody and read it with somebody. Go, go, go. Go get some coffee and and, and sit around a table for an hour and just read. And then do it again the next night or three days later or whenever you want. Just do it. And and, and pray. And, And soak in the Holy Spirit. And don't just do what you feel like you want to do. Are you with me? 